but their pinch is pretty harmless and tiny. Ouch, wait, ouch, hold on, unless they get your skin. 200 gallon tanks, and then those commercial boats are gonna have even bigger tanks. So to fill up, we just pulled our next stone crab trap. He's slippery. But his left arm, I mean, I think he might have lost that in a fight too. The line and buoy in his claw right there, you guys can see that. $40, $40 in the negative. In the negatives without a single, without a single crab. Welcome to a Gale Force Twins episode where today we are going to take you guys stone crabbing with us and even more specifically we're going to be talking about why is stone crab so expensive and how much does it cost if you wanted to go stone crabbing. Exactly so we are going to be telling you guys the cost for us to go recreationally crabbing in order to kind of get an understanding of why it is so expensive to order crab claws at a restaurant or the seafood market. Now of course the commercial guys are going to have a little bit of different costs than we do as recreational fishermen but it is going to give us an idea and an insight of understanding why the fish, why the crab is so expensive. My name is Amanda. My name is Emily and welcome to our channel Gale Forest Twins. Before we even pull the first trap, there are going to be some pretty big upfront expenses. Whether you're a commercial guy or a recreational guy, you have to buy a boat. So that's kind of a big, major step. So first there's the cost of owning a boat. That's going to include insurance. Not only that, if you're a commercial guy, you're going to need some commercial fishing licenses. If you're a recreational guy, you're going to need some recreational fishing licenses, all of which cost money. Insurance, whether you have business insurance, boating insurance, recreational boating insurance, or commercial vessel insurance. There's a huge amount of overhead before you even pull a trap. But we're really just today gonna focus on the actual traps and the crabs themselves. First, we're gonna go pull our very first trap. We have 10 out right now. And you can have recreationally five traps per person. One set of traps from our local tackle shop cost $170. Not built. Not built. So guys, there's labor involved. So one set is five traps though. Yeah, one set is five traps, so two sets is like pretty much more than $300 for 10 traps. And then obviously concrete is inexpensive, but you do have to go to Home Depot, buy your concrete, and build the traps yourself. Yeah, so if you're recreationally crabbing, you gotta get five traps per person, $170 each. Plus you gotta get your um, concrete, and then you gotta find the time to build your traps. If you're a commercial guy, you're gonna be buying hundreds, hundreds. thousands of traps and then you have to find Probably the labor someone to do it to build all of these traps it took us three days to build our traps because you have to build them screw them in concrete concrete has to set labels labels i mean there's line, a lot buoys yes a lot involved. pulling the first trap now the single individual trap is 34 dollars. so this trap with the rope plus the buoy is 34 dollars. but we have concrete so we're going to go ahead and say that it's $35. <laughs> and we work for free. Yeah, we work for free. So our reward is our stone crabs our for lunch. Our labor to build the traps is net zero dollars, if that makes sense. We have crabs. We have crabbies. If you guys saw our last crabbing video, this <sighs> season was a little rough for us to find the ultimate crabbing location. And in our last video, we found the location. So this time we moved all of our traps to this new area that we've never really kept them in in previous years, but every year is different. And sometimes you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do to find the crabs. So our first trap is three crabs and none of them are keeper crabs, but you can see here we've got these bones. So these are actually bones from pig's feet. So that's what we're gonna be using for bait is pig's feet. So the pig's feet themselves, we spend around $50 for a case of pig's feet. I wanna say a case is around 40 pounds. For us, a case of pig's feet lasts 10 traps. So and it lasts 10 days. And it lasts 10 days. So $50 for a case divided into 10 traps, $5 of bait per trap. So this trap itself is now at $40, but we have three technically oh yeah, $40 non right. for crabs. So that means we've for got $40, $40 in, the in the negative without a single without a single crab. All right, we're gonna send our crab home. Since none of these guys are keepers, they're just gonna go ahead and go home. And sometimes we'll rebate these right away, but today we're actually just gonna take them back to the dock. Yeah. 
and we'll bait them another time before the season's over. Basically, if we can't, if we're not 100% sure we're gonna be able to pull our traps again within 10 days time, we will bring them back in. And this is one of those times where we got some travel coming up exactly. and we don't want to we break the law. We have some <laughs> plans. Where are we going right now? We have some plans to go to Texas, maybe. Oh, yes. Might be going to Texas. We got a lot of things coming up that we know we're going to be busy and might not get a chance to go crabbing. And obviously, we don't want to leave our traps out for, well, it's illegal to leave them out for more than 10 days and not pull them. So, gotta do that. We are approaching trap number two. And something that we also need to talk about is so if it cost us, what did we say? It was like 40 bucks for a case? Right now, we're at. No, no it's 50 bucks for a case. Okay, a case of pig speed is around 50 bucks, depending on where you buy it and the, the year. This year it's a little more expensive. But guys, the commercial guys are gonna go out with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of pig's feet. So think about that type of commitment just in bait alone. Now, if you're recreational and you're fishing yep. and you have some fish carcasses, fish carcasses work great, but you need a lot and you need to stuff the traps full to the point where they barely close because they'll disintegrate way quicker. And I wouldn't do that and leave your traps out 10 days. I'd probably go like four to seven because it will basically be eaten quicker. And if the crabs don't have food, then they'll start to eat each other and die in the trap. And that would be a waste of potential either meat for you or for the wildlife to continue to live and keep growing once you pull it and let them go. I guess another expense we didn't talk about yet was fuel. So for perspective, fuel, let's just round, I guess I could round, probably rounding down would be $4 a gallon. $4 and that's rounding down. Yeah, four, big time. 4 25 a gallon is about standard. So I will round down for this one to make it easier. So let's say we're at $4 a gallon. And our tank, we have about 205 gallon, depending on the boat, the size boat, you could have between 100, 200 gallon tanks. And then those commercial boats are gonna have even bigger tanks. So to fill up, you know, a 30-ish size boat with a 200-ish size tank, we're talking 200 times four. Hey, I see the crabs in here. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry to interrupt Emily's math over there, but we just need to take a minute and appreciate the size of these crabs. Emily, here we go. Holy cow, <laughs> look at that. We've got four keeper claws in this trap. These guys look delicious. Back to our math, Amanda. If there's a 200 gallon tank and it's $4 a gallon, it's 800 bucks to fill the whole tank up. <gasps> look at this guy. Look at how big he is. Wow, his claws are huge. So $800 to fill up the whole tank. Obviously, we're not going through the whole tank just to go crabbing, but that does give you a perspective on fuel. Maybe today we'll burn, because we're running kind of far for our stone crab trap, 40 gallons. Mm -hmm. So 40 times four, it's $160 of fuel just to go recreationally pull 10 traps. All right, so Amanda has this crab in her hands, and he has the line and buoy in his claw right there. You guys can see that. He doesn't want to and let go. Amanda, do you know how many pounds of pressure these guys can pinch? Um, I think it's like a thousand pounds. Are you kidding? No, it's more. It's like way more. Pounds? It's more? More. Did you look it up? Yes. Oh, do so you know? Yes. Five thousand pounds. More. Ten thousand pounds. Less. Eight thousand pounds. <laughs> more. Nine thousand pounds. Nine thousand pounds of pressure in a stone crab claw. And it's called a bite, which I know is weird. You'd think it'd be a pinch, but people call it bite. If the crab bites you, it's basically the crab pinches you. So the stone crab claws bite is 9,000 pounds, pounds of pressure. pressure. That is something new that I learned today. So guys, here we go. We got our wonderful stone crab. We're gonna go ahead and harvest. Um, both these claws are gonna be keepers. So um, you do wanna measure them if you're not sure, but I'm 1 million percent sure these are keepers. We do this a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these claws. Whoa! Check out this, oh, there he goes. He was hanging on the side there. We got some more keeper claws in the next trap. So I have another expense, Emily. Yes. Tools, gauges, how much would you say a gauge cost? Oh, I don't know, maybe like 10 bucks? I'd say five bucks. Uh, I think I'd more than five. Gauges are expensive though, trust me, more than you think. How about this? I don't even know what this is called. Tongs. Tongs, but they're crab tongs. I'd say this is easily 10, maybe yeah, more. Yeah, 15. This feels heavy duty. It's stainless steel, really nice. Hasn't rusted, had it all season, no problems with it. Plus a gaff to help pull yep, your trap We got our gaff here. So we got our gaff. If you're a commercial guy, you're gonna have a really fancy like winch system type thing. And um, let's pull these guys out and harvest some claws. Just like the last two crabs, it looks like we have two keeper claws. Now legally, you can harvest both claws 
in the state of Florida for stone crab, but we choose only keep one claw per crab at all times because it gives them a better survival rate once you release them back into the wild. Now, a lot of people think that the crabs need their claws to eat and they don't. So when the crab goes back without its claws, it still can live its life. It actually can use its legs to eat. Now it might not be eating mollusks or things with hard shells, but it can still eat and live its life just, I guess, maybe a little more differently than he would with two. Emily, why don't you take that gauge and measure this claw? So you can see it from the elbow joint to the tip of that bottom claw. He is clearly larger than the gauge. This is a keeper crab, a keeper claw. Keeper claw. A keeper claw, And because you can't keep the whole crab. So our favorite trick to harvest claws is to take a, a knife, basically, and we put it right here in this soft spot. And what happens Where's is the soft spot, right Amanda? here where my middle finger's pointing. Yes. And what's gonna happen is the crab is going to choose to voluntarily release his arm, allowing for a really clean break. So Emily, why don't we go ahead and show, demonstrate that. Right in the soft spot, just like that. So we have a really clean break. It really doesn't mess up with the meat at all. We've actually yes, tested because it. We've noticed no difference in the meat when you do it like this. Yes, because you can take the claw off on your own. Yes, so what you can do is you can put your crab on a flat surface and you basically take the claw in your right hand or left hand, whatever one you are, and you kind of want to just go straight down with it. But sometimes that can crack the shell and damage the crab itself. So, so if the crab goes back injured, obviously it's going to have even less of a chance of survival. So why don't we let this guy go, Amanda? Right, so we're going to send this guy home, but and why don't we show, this guy, claw doesn't actually look like a keeper claw in second look. I'm going to show you what a non-keeper claw looks like. Here you guys can see that it turns out this claw is a keeper. So if they're close, always, always measure them. His claw does not fit inside the gauge. It's bigger than the gauge. If it was like, fitting inside like that, if that makes sense. Yeah. Then you'd be too small, but we already got our keeper claw from him, so we'll, we'll release him. We definitely have another keeper claw and non-keeper claw on this crab, so let's go ahead and measure that keeper claw just to show once again what a keeper claw looks like. It's definitely a lot larger than that gauge. Can we see that, Emily? There we go. You can see very well that his claw is much larger than the gauge. And then this one is gonna be definitely too small to tell just by looking at it. Ready? Yep. And we have our semi-natural semi release from our crab. There we go, send the crab home. To take a break from all the financial talk, we're gonna tell Twin Truth. So our longtime viewers will know what Twin Truths are. Twin Truths originally were stories we would tell about what it was like growing up as twins. And eventually we just couldn't think of any more stories. But I just thought of a story, and it's more of a story about growing up and actually not twin. I, I don't know, maybe it's Twitter story because we have the same taste buds. I'm just going to go ahead and tell the story. <laughs> oh boy. So, um, I, I don't no know. I have no idea what this is. story is. I can on my own. So, our birthdays are in April. Do you know what's now? No. No. <laughs> our birthdays are in April. Stone crab season ends oh, in yeah. May. Oh, yeah. So, about. every year for our birthdays growing up, our parents asked us, what do you want to do for your birthday? And every year, we said we wanted to go to Joe's Stone Crab and eat Stone Crab on our birthday. It was our favorite thing to do in the world. Sometimes, no, but sometimes we would go get them from like a, a fish market or yeah, Whole Foods. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes we, we would get we them eat at home. Food, we eat them at home. But it was always a birthday dinner it was stone crab. And I guess the reason why I'm saying it's a twin truth is because we both wanted the same thing every year for our birthdays. I don't think there was ever a year where Emily was like, I want steak. And Amanda was like, I want stone crab. Or someone was like, I want a birthday party. And someone was like, well, I just want to go to Disney. I mean, I think every single year we pretty much agreed to the same thing because we do share a birthday. Something that is interesting is that growing up, we didn't grow up crabbing. We didn't start crabbing or getting into it. Um, the two of us got into it kind of the same way we got into fishing. It was not something our parents taught us to do or anything like that. But we got into crabbing a couple, a few years ago. And to this day, I still love crab, love stone crab just as much as we did growing up yes, on our birthdays. I would agree with that, but I would say that I don't love fish as much as I liked it before I started fishing. Yeah, I, I don't like eating it as much as I used to like it. I'm, I've become more picky on how it's cooked to the point where even really, really good restaurants, I probably won't get fish. There's only a handful of restaurants in the Keys that I'll order fish from. One yes. of them, the Square Group in Isla Mirada. That one's the good. Best the best fish. is the panko. Um, they have like a panko lunch special. Yes, yeah, the lunch special. And the other it's one snapper, is Houston's snapper. and Pompano Beach. Yeah, that one's they good They make too. the best fish dish. <laughs> what trap number is this, Amanda? I think um, this is four. Five. Oh, there's five left. Trap number five. Three, All right. Four. So right? let's. There's a four. Look, look to your no, right. right. I know, I look to my right. We got four in the boat. Amanda's pulling number five. And let's finish pulling all 10, figure out how many crab claws we have, 
and then we can do the math about how much each claw costs. So when you go to a market or a restaurant, you will charge based on the size of the crab claw. So there's like small, medium, large, colossal, jumbo. Colossal is the biggest, jumbo is the second biggest. And you will pay more per pound for a colossal crab claw than you will for like the mediums or the largest. What's going on, Amanda? Come look at this guy. Oh, wow. He's got a double nub. Let's look at his right nub. You can see he lost his arm probably in a fight because he's way too tiny to have keeper claws. And it is actually growing back right there. But his left arm, I mean, I think he might have lost that in a fight too. So this guy is a survivor. We're going to get him back in the water. This is ASAP. a perfect example of a crab that doesn't have technically either claw because this one's not really functioning as a full claw. And he's surviving. He's living on his own. He's probably living in scavenger mode, eating what he can and kind of avoiding the big guys. On the topic of the stone crabs releasing their claws. So a little fun fact, if you guys don't know this yet, because I guess we didn't say it in this video, even though we have in past content, is that the stone crabs regenerate their claws. So Amanda, why are we only taking the claws? Because they're regenerate. You can't take the body. You can't, it's illegal. It's completely illegal to take the whole claw, the whole crab. So a lot of people be like, why don't you just take the whole crab and eat the whole thing and basically just have a whole crab. And it's illegal. We can only keep the claws. So you have to only take the claws and they have to be a certain size. And yes, they do regrow. It's kind of like a lizard in its tail. So you guys know how lizards will drop their tails if they feel threatened or something like that. It's kind of the same thing with the crabs. It will drop its claws and regrow. So us using the knife trick is kind of like replicating a fight for the crab. So at least when it does release it, it's doing it in a more natural form as opposed to just completely breaking it off and ripping it off. We did used to do that all the time and it's completely legal to do it either way, but we have found that with the knife trick, it just feels a little better knowing that it was more of what they would do in the wild. So that way the break is cleaner and you they definitely go back. Get a cleaner break. Yeah, definitely get a cleaner break. And they go back in the wild knowing that you did what you could for them to go back, keep living and breeding and being a crab. So Amanda, they, yes. you just found one in the trap with yes, no claws. Yes, I found claws. this guy in the trap with no claws. Now, based on how they look, I actually want to say that it looks like these guys' claws were actually harvested, um, maybe from a commercial fisherman or a recreational fisherman, but he is still living, he is still thriving. So let's just get him back in the water as soon as possible. There you go, little guy, keep swimming. Then we got two more crabs in here. We got an itty bitty baby crab, which I'll just grab with my hands. But be careful, but even the babies. Oh yes, there we go, <laughs> all right. Got the baby crab. So Amanda, there's yes. two ways you can hold them. Yeah, so I can hold them from the, let me turn it around. You grab these two little back legs. They're very, yes. Um, you can grab these legs and you're pretty much in the safe zone. I've never had an issue getting pinched like this, unless you're holding the crab with one hand like so, and you come across, which I had done. That is very painful. Or, or you gotta hold both you claws. You can hold both claws, but you gotta hold both. You can't hold one. So a little bitty baby, we'll also send him home. This right claw is going to be a keeper, so I'm going to ask Emily to grab that gauge and double check and measure him. Okay, so that is a keeper claw. Now, considering how small it is, Emily, I'm going to go ahead and say we throw this guy home because we have plenty of meat for, well, we have some really nice large claws in there right now. Although we are going to keep track of how many, so I guess we'll have to add one to how many we could have caught to figure out how much each claw costs. We just pulled our next stone crab trap. <laughs> She's slippery. And we have a puffer fish in our stone crab trap. So if we release him, let's watch him go back into the wild and shrink back down. And he's going to flip upside down. All right. Are you ready? I'm just going to put him in. And there, there he goes. goes and swims away. What else do we have in the trap? Here we have a rock crab. Now these guys, I want you to know that if you do grab their back legs, they can still reach around and pinch yeah, you. Clearly. But their pinch is pretty harmless and tiny. Ouch, Wait, ouch, hold on. unless they get your skin. Amanda? Yes? I was wrong about something. Yes, I know you were. So I did some research, or actually, I, not really. I looked back on my notes because I already did the research. And it turns out that stone crabs, how many pounds of pressure? It's not 9,000. Not 9,000, it's 19,000. 19, That's 19, insane. 19,000 pounds of pressure. Could you imagine getting pinched by one of these guys? That yep. is a scary thought. Yes. This is our last stone crab and his right claw, our left right there, 
is going, going to be the keeper. keeper. And the right one's definitely too small. And it's actually a female too, if you check her out. Oh wow, you can we see do she's got a female. female. She does not have eggs, so we are good to go ahead. Yeah, and so you can't the keep any we with eggs. We do have to check for eggs if it is a female. I'll get a picture to pop up so you guys can see what it looks like. If they do have eggs, you literally cannot harvest a claw from a female if they have eggs. If they don't have eggs, you can take one. So Amanda, how many claws can we keep? So we can keep one gallon per person or two per boat. Whichever is Whichever less. Whichever is less. So for us, it's always going to be one gallon because there's only two of us fishing. But if there's like five people fishing, you can keep two gallons, basically. That's kind of the best way to think of it. So Emily, why don't you go ahead, let's grab that knife and do a semi-natural release. Last claw. Semi-natural release. There we go. Sending the crab home. So let's count our claws and figure out how expensive each claw we caught today is. Let's check out our bucket, Amanda. Okay, so our bucket is right here. We have 10 claws in our bucket, but we caught 12 keepers, but put let two, two of them, them go, were pretty they close. They were really close. So we let it go. If you have a live well on your boat, I like putting them in the live well. Our live well is currently not working. So sorry, in the bucket. And then also something to remember guys is you have to go home and cook them right away. Do not let hours and hours go by. You cannot not cook them right away. Okay, so I'm gonna do some math really quickly, not including Basically, we're not going to include one-time fees. So the traps, we're not going to put the traps into the cost. We're going to do how much did it cost us just now to go out and pull the traps. So fuel so, and bait. Let's say we burned, Amanda, how many gallons of fuel do you, did we burn? I think today, I think we are at around 30 gallons of fuel. Yeah, we're around 30. All right, so 30 gallons times four and a quarter, $4.25, okay, is $127 in fuel. Wow, it's pricey. Plus the pig's feet. We had about 50 bucks in pig's 50 feet. Bucks. It was $177.50. Okay, divided by 12 claws. Divided by 12 claws. $14.80 a claw. So, that is why when you go to restaurants and you see how expensive they are and how much of a delicacy these things are, that's why it's so expensive. And this is recreationally. Imagine those commercial guys. They have labor, they have fees, they have way more they have to worry about, and obviously they're going to be catching a lot more because they're, they're out for, there for hours. Yes. But it's the labor that they're putting into it, which is just insane. One thing we forgot to factor in, guys, was the fact that you're going out for fun and you're enjoying time with family and friends. That's priceless. So you got to add that in. You can't look at all those crabs like, wow, it's really expensive. Because you're not going out for the purpose of saving money on stone crab. You're going out to have a great time with friends and family and enjoy the water and the wildlife of being outdoors. But if you did want to save money, you're better off going to a restaurant. I am going to read you some restaurant prices that I found from a local seafood market. Depending on the size, depends how much they cost per pound. So medium claws, you can get about seven per pound, is going to cost you $35. The next size up is select, which will get you about six claws per pound, it's gonna cost you $42. Then we have a large claws, which is gonna be $68 for about four claws, which is gonna be about a pound and a quarter. Next, we have jumbo claws, $105 for four claws, totaling one and a half pounds. Lastly, the biggest of all of them, $140 for Colossal Claws. You are going to get four Colossal Claws, which are pretty big ones, totaling two pounds for $140. So $140 for four claws. Yes. Yeah. So when you look at what we have and you actually compare it, it's actually, I would say it's comparable. It does now, make sense. Obviously where you are, what restaurants you're at and where you are like in the state or where you are crabbing, and the time of year and the season is going to affect the prices pretty drastically. I would say those are on the high side right now, but just some information, food for thought for you guys. Thanks so much for coming along and watching with us. We hope you had some fun learning about how much it does cost to go crabbing. Again, we hope you, if you go crabbing guys, you do it for fun of it, for the fun of it. We want you to get out there, have fun and stay safe. And family and enjoy the water and the wildlife of being outdoors. Good. Yeah. So now I talk about this thing. Say, but if you did want to save money, it's yes. better off going to a restaurant. Okay. But, all right. Can you just do the whole section again? Yes. Okay. Um, looks like we've got a rock crab right here. Oh, you okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I freaked out. Their pinches don't hurt. <laughs> all right, let's do that again. So for us, it's always going to be, how would it feel? So let's say you have five people on a boat. You can't keep Wait, five gallons. Point, though. Oh. Thank well, you. Well, actually, can okay. you say those facts yeah. like out loud? Sure. You know what I mean? Is the price and joy? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to say like <gasps> what you get out of it. I know. All right. So okay. Uh, <laughs> Fifty, ten, 
It's five. Five? Divided by ten. It's five dollars. It's five. Sorry. That's really bad. <laughs>